Hello everybody, welcome back to Techno Feed for today's Random Feed. I'm your host Josh and before we get started on today's Random Feed, please remember to subscribe, press the red big red subscribe button down below and hit the bell icon to, so you can get notified for r- daily Random Feed videos. And don't forget, at the end of the video, always smash that like button if you like this video and as you know i've been trying out a couple different formats for this so now we'll be looking through a sort of new format of this so let's get into today's random feed first up on today's random feed we're gonna look at the fugaku or fujitsu's fugaku it's supposed to be successor, the successor to the Fujitsu A64 AFX. And for people who don't know who, what the Fujitsu A64 AFX is, it is basically a, a CPU that's used in only HPC projects and supercomputers. It's the first and the only ARM processor that's built from the ground up, like from scratch, like a processor built from scratch from ARM which launched back in 2019 and this thing packs a huge 48 cores 3.38 teraflops and runs at 2.2 gigahertz and with 32 gigs of HBM2 memory on the die itself so no slots no sodium slots no slots at all on the die itself it already has 32 gigs of HBM2 memory and it has a bandwidth of one terabyte per second. So the bandwidth that the CPU communicates with the memory, that is always the reason, that is basically the groundbreaking thing that this thing can do. It's one terabyte per second, which is a lightning speed already. And this, remember, this is only the Fujitsu A64FX. That's the older version. We haven't talked about the successor yet. The successor is going to be a lot better. And just not back to the Fujitsu A64 effects. This Fujitsu wants the things in the... Pro- the mm, how am I supposed to say this? Huh? The characteristics of this processor. To trigger down to lower end or more community or public friendly hardware. Such as your cloud computers. Those cloud supercomputers they use in Apple iClouds they use the supercomputers they want the processor to trigger down to there and right out of the box this is still a consumer grade CPU and according to the according to TechRadar the the article I'm basing it on it claimed that the current AX64 FX has a performance Per watt of 768, which surpasses GPUs from NVIDIA and AMD. They surpass it, but but it surpasses it quite badly, if I would say myself, for such a huge CPU of this caliber. But it's like a normal CPU. This is considered a general purpose CPU, as we said. And... It could run Windows and Linux out of the box. But, sadly, the processor that is supposed to run in Japan's main supercomputer, the K, was decommissioned back in August in 2019. But, but, we are now talking about the Fugaku, the replacement. And, all myself true, but these claims are just astonishing. They claim that they want the Fugaku to be 100 times faster than the A64 FX. 100 times faster. Which means that it's going to have 400 teraflops. 400 teraflops! What? That's huge! And not only that, it's claiming that it's just going to launch at the end of this year. Or later this year. And it by any chance, it may be aimed to be the first supercomputer to hit one exoflop. Exoflop. (laughs) 
the first computer to hit one exa flop. Which is just huge. What? Wow. Who talking about a hundred times faster? They really mean a hundred times faster. Wow. I mean, a little Fujitsu is well known for just the business laptops and the computers and the tablets. Not meant for the CPUs. It's doing this. This. Holy crap. That is just outrageous. Ooh. Now Intel really has got to take some note there to catch up with AMD. Right now, moving on, we're going next to computer stuff again. We are now looking at the MSI Modern 14 Laptops. It, this is a revision. This is just a, a revision. Everything else remains the same, but this is just an internal revision. So it is switching its sides from Team Blue to Team Red. AMDs and they're starting at a good huge cheap base price of just $649 which is a steal considering what the specs you get in the absolute base model you're getting an i Ryzen 5 4500U and you said i5 that but it's a Ryzen 5 4500U processor which features AMD Zen 2 architecture 7 nanometer process node which has six cores, six threads, no hyperthreading. Unfortunately, it's kind of related to AM Intel's one for hyperthreading, but this has no hyperthreading, so it's six cores, six threads, two point three gigahertz base, and a four gigahertz boost clock. And it won't have to deal with Nvidia MX three hundred and fifty graphics or MX graphics at all. It has its own Vega graphics. 6 Vega cores at 1500 MHz and this is only the Ryzen 5 4500U now we look at the next on the high option Ryzen 7 4700U 8 cores, 8 threads, no hyper threading still no hyper threading but with a 2 GHz base and a 4.1 GHz boost it still rocks AMD's new Zen 2 architecture 7 nanometer node same as the Ryzen 5 but one thing is its Vega graphics is just one core more. Seven Vega cores at 1600 MHz. And the computer does have quite decent specs. It weighs in only 1.3 kilograms. It only it's with an aluminium chassis. Aluminium chassis weighing at 1.3 kilograms. Look at that. And a screen of 1920 by 1080. They claim that this will have a screen to body ratio of more than 90%. I'm not sure if it's going to be more than 90%, but they claim that ultra thin bezels will do that. It's a backlit keyboard and a quick change from Intel. Last time on the old Intel ones, they only have one slot for RAM memory. And they only support up to, up to, right on here, up to only 2666. Only 2066. But now because of the AMD coming in its faster faster memory speeds, more bandwidth for AMD, so they bumped that up to two slots. So they can have a maximum of 64 gigs over 32 gigs. And he has the high memory clock speed of 3200 megahertz. Though when he coming out of the box, it only has 2666, which is a step up from 2133, but it's still not enough for AMD. Does have a single M.2 at PCI 3.0 slot, which support both PCIe M.2 cards or SATA cards, and it comes stock with 256 gigs of storage. One thing that is quite off is its Bluetooth and Wi-Fi choices. Bluetooth, it can come with two options: Bluetooth 5 and Wi-Fi 5, or Bluetooth 5.1 or Wi-Fi 6. If do you know what if you don't know what Wi Fi six is, I can link to a channel with Wi Fi six, Linus Tech Tips talking about Wi Fi six and how it's a new thing. And but I really find this combination a bit weird, if I do say so myself. And coming up to the next one, we have a fifty two watt battery, which can supposedly, supposedly, up to ten hours of battery life, ten hours. But it must go by its power-sipping CPUs. 
And last but not least, the port selection are quite decent. Two USB two, two USB two point oh ports. What is wrong with me? I don't know. One HDI HDMI port, uh, but it can project up to four K at thirty hertz. One USB three point two Gen one Type C port. No Thunderbolt, unfortunately. I mean, you don't can get a thunder. You can't get a Thunderbolt port at this kind of price range at the moment. Has a three point five millimeter combo jack, as well as an integrated micro SD card reader, and audio with two watt speakers, two two watt speakers to be exact, and all for a stunning range of six hundred and forty nine dollars for the base, and the Ryzen seven coming at seven forty nine, which is great steal, and it comes its arrival to be estimated of the early first is early June, which is basically. Tomorrow, the time of recording this, it'll be tomorrow, and then early June, and then June starts, and then these computers will start shipping in. So great job, MSI and Ryzen, and Ryzen is really taking over, and getting a huge chunk of market, just by doing this. And really, AMD is really catching up to Intel. Now coming up to our last news article for today, would be, well, this one is has to be taken with taken it lightly. But it is kind of really interesting. It's about Intel's XE DG1 graphics. So Intel set out to create their own dedicated graphics for only notebooks. As I repeat, only for notebooks, not for desktops. But they have recently leaked out, possibly leaked out, 3D Mark scores, and suggest that AMD and Nvidia are still safe from the GPU fight. As he only kept a score, a score of five nine six zero with an i nine ninety nine hundred K processor, a ninety nine hundred K, which is like the top end, top end, top end, unless you got a ten ninety ten ninety nine K, which is the new top end. But it is the same is in the same ballpark as a GTX seven fifty Ti, which scored five four zero two. Onto the three D Mark, which is what a new GPU is getting used to a veteran. Woo! And but the worst thing is, it is still really far away from the old budget king, the GTX ten fifty, which is a five to eight hundred points higher than the DG one. But we do not do not know because this may be just a testing to see if it works. But we may know that maybe Intel is holding back, and knowing that this Nvidia's low end MX two hundred fifty, it's performing worse than the DG one. So if that's a bit of consolation, I mean, yeah, and it's also outdoing the MX three hundred fifty. So. If you call it a bit of consolation, I guess so. But even if this CPU were to make it out to the market, it only make it out to the notebook market, cause it will only have internal specs. And, but mostly this one will go good with only Intel's upcoming Tiger Lake mobile processors. All right, so that's it for today's techno feed video. Hope you guys enjoyed it, and return tomorrow for more techno feed. Remember to just subscribe down there. Hope you enjoy and like what I'm doing now with this channel. And if you prefer this setup and format, do leave a comment down below if you like it. For but for now, stay home, stay safe, have a good day.